from around the globe, it's the Cube. Presenting Cube on Cloud. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE. The Cube on Cloud continues. We're here with Anna Pinzuk, who's the Chief Development Officer at Anaplan. And we've been unpacking the future of cloud. We've heard from a number of CIOs how they're thinking about cloud in the coming decade. And first of all, Anna, welcome back to the Cube. Thanks for participating. It's great to see you again. It's great to see you, Dave. And I'm so excited to be here with you again. So hopefully we'll be doing this soon. I hope in, in 2021, <laughs> we'll be able to be face to face. To face everybody to face. out there, I we know. miss you all. I now, know. now, Anna, in a lot of respects, you think about the CIO role, something that you're, you're intimately familiar with, and, and it's unique because she or he has a very wide observation space across the company. You know, whereas a GM or a business line manager, they're you know, most concerned with their respective business. The CIO, they got to worry about the whole enchilada. And, and we've heard a lot in this program about digital transformation. We've heard a lot, of course, in the past couple of years. A lot of it was lip service, but but digital transformation, it's no longer optional. What's changed in your view in the way that businesses are, are going about it? You know, Dave, I mean, from my perspective, it's interesting and this year in particular has been really telling for us, right? So um, I think before uh, many companies were thinking about, hey, I want to be online. I want to grow my revenues, you know, with, um, with digital, I want to have a presence. But what's happened actually this year um, with COVID in particular is that it's gone from being kind of a good to have, you know, to really a fundamental uh, necessity. We must have it. And so um, when I talk to CIOs today, um, they're really thinking about different kinds of things than before, not just going digital, but how do I enable um, my people to work remotely, right? I've got to enable that. Um, how do I bring the agility and the flexibility that I need in our business, uh, especially with these new ways of working, right? Um, how do I look at business resiliency? You know, not just from a, uh, you know, something happens and then how do I recover from it, but also how do I help our, you know, our company and our people then actually spring forward and grow from where we are. So it's gone from a, uh, a topic that was happening at the CIO, maybe at the business level, but now it's really also a fundamental CEO and board conversation. And so now we're seeing the CIOs having to present to boards, you know, what is our digital transformation, our, our digital strategy. So I wonder what you've seen in that regard. I mean, I'm interested in what role, you know, cloud plays in supporting those digital initiatives, but more specifically, you know, cloud migration came, you know, off the charts in terms of interest because of COVID but you had those that, that were you know, deep into cloud, had a lot of experience, those maybe not as much. Are, are you seeing any kind of schism in the marketplace where there's maybe a, a great advantage to those who really had years of experience uh, and maybe a disadvantage to those who didn't? Or is there kind of an equilibrium you're seeing in the marketplace? How do you see that playing out? Yeah, I mean, I, uh, you know, what I'm seeing is that um, I think there used to be a spectrum of CIOs in effect, you know, the ones that were kind of a little bit, you know, you know, forward ahead on the cloud, both on cloud infrastructure as well as SaaS, right? And, and what are the services that we have? And then there were some that were really, um, you know, trying to think about what's the security, you know, implications of the cloud and, you know, is it more expensive? And, you know, so there was this spectrum of CIOs. And I think now what's happened is there's such a business imperative that I think CIOs are saying, look, I'm either going to survive, you know, uh, in this new world with the agility and the flexibility that I need. And so cloud, you know, I'm seeing a lot of CIOs really saying, okay, cloud is uh, not just fashionable, but it's, <laughs> it's in and a necessity, right? And we must, uh, and we must do it. And I think frankly, the CIOs that don't embrace the cloud and that level of agility are going to struggle, right? It's, a, it's really a, a personal imperative for a CIO in addition to sort of for the company. So a lot of times we talk about, you know, the, the three dimensions of people process and, and technology. And, and I'm interested in your thoughts on how cloud has affected those traditional structures and the, and the value chains. I mean, you got some people are really good at tech, some people are really good at people, some people are really good at process. Has the cloud affected that? Has it upended it, changed it in, in any way? Yeah, I mean, let's, let's like unpack that a little bit, you know, Dave, because if you think about process, I mean, one of the interesting things about the cloud is that 
and, and if you think about the cloud as going all the way from like IaaS or sort of infrastructure all the way up the stack to actually providing business processes embedded, you know, in, in a SaaS service, then from a process perspective and for CIOs, it's really a upended how they think about business process re-engineering in their companies. Um, if, if I think even, you know, five years ago where you would uh, have a whole organization that's you know focused on business process re-engineering. You do that; it takes a long time. You know, you get a, a consultant maybe to help you, and then you work through that process. If you look at, at a SaaS service like Anaplan today, where we uh, our goal is, for example, to um, orchestrate business performance. We we are a SaaS business planning platform. We've incorporated into our platform that business process right so the role of the cio relative to business process in effect changes right now it's about how to leverage uh, a cloud infrastructure and then how do you enable the customizations on top of that but generally speaking that's a lot easier than having to think about re-engineering uh, the whole uh, company um, if you think about uh, the technology stack obviously the cloud uh, embeds a lot of technology you know, in the cloud, right? So you have a lot of native services that are available to you. Um, that is awesome from a talent perspective, you know, because um, before maybe you need to have, you know, needed to have database experts or, you know, uh, Kubernetes experts. And not that we don't need those today, but many of those capabilities come, you know, native in the cloud today. So in effect, uh, how it helps a CIO is to provide sort of this uh, ecosystem of talent kind of embedded in what the cloud provider does, right? So I wonder, so let's stay on that for a minute. So I remember before Amazon announced AWS in what, 2006, the CIO said to me, yeah, I'm thinking about maybe I don't need to run my own email, right? So That's right. And then of course, we have to, we've days. seen the sassification <laughs> of, of, of businesses, which to your point, you know, makes things uh, simpler in that I can focus on other areas and not to worry about you know managing infrastructure to support apps. At the same time, you've had this proliferation of, of cloud. You mentioned, of course, that you're with Anaplan, you see, you got Workday, you got Salesforce, yeah. you got ServiceNow, Oracle apps, and, and, and people struggle. Okay, how do I get these things talking to others? There's that, they're worried about that data layer. So there's this new level of complexity. How do you see that playing out in the next decade? Yeah, and, you know, um, we used to say that, you know, uh, we sort of uh, uh, shift what we do at a certain level. And now as an organization, we start to look at kind of higher value outcomes, right? And so I see that happening and you're absolutely right. The conversations that I have with customers now are, hey, um, you know, there's things that are enabled by the cloud. And then on top of that, you need a set of APIs or connectors or ways to get data in and out of, you know, in and out of a particular system or ways to link. In, in our case, we're linking with Salesforce to Anaplan to Workday or other tools, right? And so you start to think more about the business outcome that you want. The CIO needs to be focused on that um, instead of maybe um, uh, sort of the fundamentals of the technology, those come, you know, those come for you. And then it's really more about the partnership with the business side, right? To say, okay, what is it that you're trying to do? And can I enable that through my, you know, cloud architecture, the Workdays, you know, the Adobe's or, or the Salesforce's of the world. So I think the conversation is changing. And from my perspective, what's really cool about that is um, it brings the CIO to, uh, you know, really makes the CIO a, a business and thought leader, a strategic leader, right? Because uh, the IT shop is not just talking tech, you know, the IT top, uh, shop has to talk a lot more about the outcome that they're trying to deliver. So, I mean, in the early days of cloud, I just want to pick up on what you just said. I mean, you, you, a lot of people in IT saw the cloud as a threat to their livelihoods. And, yeah. and I, I think I'm inferring from your statements that we're largely through that dynamic and the CIO is now really trying to make the cloud plat a platform for transformation and, and, and monetization or whatever other organizational goal might be saving lives or better government. Uh, is that sort of how you see it? That the, the role you know, has look, changed talk, to that? I know, I mean, I talked to so many companies and it's still, we're still going through that transition. So I don't think we're completely over the, the hump of you know cloud all day everywhere, but um, at the same time, 
Um, I think what the CIOs really focused on these days is really around business agility and business outcomes for their partners. This, by the way, that's one of the things. The second thing, especially these days, is around people, you know, collaboration, communication. Um, how do we, you know, facilitate interaction of, of people, whether inside or outside of the company? Um, and so, you know, that's, um, that's a very different conversation uh, for the CIO. It doesn't mean that uh, we're not still having the basic conversation of how safe is the cloud? What security do you have built into the cloud, right? Um, and I, but I think, frankly, Dave, that we've crossed the chasm where before it used to be, hey, I'm a lot more secure on-prem. And you know, given the tremendous focus that the cloud providers and SaaS companies have put on security, um, I see many more companies, you know, feeling very at ease, and in fact, telling their organizations, right, we actually need to switch to the cloud, including large, um, you know, large uh, companies that have compliance issues, you know, or like large financial companies. Many of those are making that switch as well. Well, it's interesting. We talk about security, I mean, I think it's kind of a two-edged sword, right? Because I think a lot of, frankly, I think a lot of, uh, of executives early yeah. days used security as a way to sort of kick the can yeah. down the road. <laughs> no, and, but, right. but in the reality it was the cloud, you know, better or worse, you can make that argument, but it's different. And so, you know, different concerns people, but it's still at the end of the day, bad security practices trump, you know, good security. And so that's, that's what we, we've seen so many times, the shared responsibility model. Uh, and so people are still learning there. So, yes. so security is almost this beast in and of itself. I'm interested in your thoughts on on the priorities, I mean, are customers, are they streamlining their, their tech investments? I mean, the major focus, as you pointed out on cloud has been, it's a driver of agility and shifting resources as we talked about, but there's this constant cost pressure. You know, the procurement looking at the Amazon bill. Uh, do, do you see a, lo a lot of the same going forward or, or do you think the value equation is shifting such that there'll be Maybe you know, IT is less cost pressure. There's always going to be cost pressure, I know, but but more value producer. I think uh, I think you're right. I mean, I, I see it, and I see it uh, over the last six months. I've seen it really accelerate, uh, where CIOs are are thinking about three things, and, and and one is business resiliency. When I talk about business resiliency, I talk about the ability to recover from crap that happens. You know, where, you know, uh, whether it's pandemics or you know. Uh, global events and shifts that companies have to accommodate, right? So that's one thing that I see them thinking about. Um, this, the second one that we talked about a little bit is just agility. You know, I, I see them really focused on that and the cloud enables that. And, you know, the third one uh, in conversations is really speed to innovation because, um, you know, when companies are talking to cloud providers and particularly SaaS companies, what I see them talking about is, look, I've got this particular need and it would take me, you know, two years to do it with a legacy player because of, you know, I've got to do this on prem, uh, but you have the fundamentals built in and I think I can do it with you in three months. So I think, you know, business resiliency, both to grow and to recover from stuff, um, agility and innovation are, are really three fundamental uh, levers that I see for movement uh, movement to the cloud, right? Um, and any one of those at these days, I mean, it's funny, uh, depending on who you talk to, any one of those can propel a CIO to make, a cho to make that choice. And when they have all of that together, um, they have a lot more um, lift in effect as a CIO, they have a lot more leverage, right? In terms of what they can do for their companies. Well, let's stay on innovation. I mean, innovation, I've said many times in tech, you know, for decades, it came it came from Moore's law. I mean, it seems yeah. it seems so '90s to even say that. But I know, I know. <laughs> but it's true. So, what's going to drive innovation in the in the in the coming years? I'm interested in, the, in your perspective on how machine intelligence and AI and ML uh, and cloud, of course, play into that innovation agenda. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. You know, um, I see it a lot in our business uh, with Anaplan. Um, Innovation comes uh, from the ability to bring in sort of what you do internally and match it with what's available in the external world, right? And you mentioned it earlier, data. You know, data is like the new currency that's 
that's like software, you know, eats the world. Now we talk about data, right? And, um, and I think what's really going to drive innovation is being able to have access to the world's data. Once a company builds this digital DNA, you know, this digital uh, foundation and puts, you know, and is able to have access to that data, then you start to make uh, decisions, you know, you start to offer services, um, you start to uh, bring intelligence um, that wasn't available before, right? And um, that's uh, a really powerful thing for any company, whether you're doing, you know, forecasting and you need to sort of bring the world's data, whether you're a agricultural company, um, we talk, you know, and in these days, um, innovation comes in the form of uh, speed, you know, being able to just deliver something new um, to an audience uh, faster. So to me, the cloud enables, uh, you know, all of that, the ability to um, bring in data. And then on top of that, I mean, think about um, all the AI ML innovation that's happening around uh, the world. We, we just launched an offer actually um, to be able to do um, forecasting, intelligent forecasting on top of the cloud. We partner with, uh, with AWS Forecast for that. Um, if we didn't have a cloud platform, you know, to do that uh, and a set of APIs, you know, being digital that way really enables us uh, the opportunity to, to match, you know, one plus one equals one, you know, 100 really and bringing the power of that to get two companies together to be able to, um, to enable that type of innovation. Well, that, that, that's interesting. It reminds me of one of my friends, Ed Walsh, is the CEO of a new startup called Chaos Search. And he used the statement, he said, we're, we're standing on the shoulders of the giants. You know, we're not, you know, we're not, we're trying not, not trying to recreate it. And, and I think, you know, you got, you, what you just said is the same thing. You're sort of relying on others to build out cloud infrastructure. Totally. So here's a totally left field question. When you hear all the talks about breaking up big tech, I, I wonder, is that irrelevant to you? Because you figured, okay, the cloud's going to be there. It's maybe more about search or it's about, you know, Facebook or, you know, Amazon's dominance. Interestingly, Microsoft's really not in those discussions anymore. They were the center of it back in the I 90s. I know, but, but, I know. But as a head of you know, development for a company, does that even factor into the equation or do you kind of not worry about that? No, I mean, I'll be honest, you know, for me personally, what I do is I compartmentalize my world, right? In a sense, I view, uh, I view the partnerships and we have partnerships with Google and AWS and Microsoft and others, right? So um, I view those as part of uh, an opportunity to really uh, provide an ecosystem set of solutions, right? To customers and those are very powerful. I think those partnerships enable companies like ours, like SaaS companies to innovate faster, right? And so I compartmentalize and I say, those things are, are, are wonderful. I don't know why you would want to break up those companies. At the same time, um, you know, part of what you're referring to, you know, uh, has to do with um, more the social and the consumer elements of what's going on. But as a business leader, um, I, really, I really focus on what the power is, and particularly in, in the enterprise. What is it that we can do for uh, global enterprise companies? And, uh, at least in my mind, uh, those two things tend to be separate. A couple of things you said there that triggered my mind. One was ecosystems. We've been talking about data. One of our guests in this program, Alan Nance, has been talking about ecosystems and the power of ecosystems. And I, and I definitely see cloud as a platform to allow data sharing across those, those clouds and then to form ecosystems and, and share data in ways that we really couldn't have you know, half a decade or even you know, longer ago. And that seems to be where a lot of the innovation is, is going to occur. Some of the people talk about the flywheel effect, but it's the power of many versus the resources of you know, a few. And uh, I'm such a big believer in the ecosystem play. And part of that is because um, frankly, even over the last 20 years, the, the skills that are required and the knowledge that required that is required is so specialized, Dave. You know, if you think about you know, AI ML, and all the algorithms that we need to know and the innovation that's happening there. And so I really don't think that there's any one company that can serve a customer alone, right? And if you think about it from a uh, customer perspective, 
you know, they're made up of, their business is made up of needs from a lot of different parties that they're putting together, you know, to accommodate their business outcome. And so the only way to play uh, right now in tech is, is in a collaborative way, in an ecosystem way. Uh, I think the, the more that companies like ours work with other companies on these partnerships, and frankly, by the way, I think in the past, many companies sort of made bold announcements and they would say, oh, you know, I'm partnering with so-and-so and I've got this great partner, you know, partnership and then nothing would happen. <laughs> you know, like it was just a lot of, you know, talk. But I think what's actually happening now and it's enabled uh, by the cloud is um, we have much more of a show me culture, right? We can, we can actually say, okay, well, let's say uh, Anaplan is partnering with Google, show me, you know, show me what you're actually doing. And I, I see our customers, um, asking for references of how these ecosystem partnerships are playing. Um, and, uh, and because these stories are out there more, I think partnerships are actually much more uh, feasible and, and real and pragmatic. Yeah, I know. We call those Barney deals. You know, I love you, you love me. We do a press release and then nothing ever happens. That's right, that's right. And I think that's, um, that's not going to work going forward, Dave, right? People are asking for a lot more transparency. And so when we think about ecosystems, they really want the meat on the bone, right? They don't want just uh, announcements that don't really help their business move forward. Yeah, and you know, the other thing too, the, the, we come back to data, it's always comes back to data, right? Every conversation, yes. but the, the data that's created out of that ecosystem is going to throw off, you know, new capabilities and, and new data products, data services, and that, to me is a really exciting you know, new chapter, I think, of cloud. Yeah, and it's interesting, you know, the conversations I'm having now are, are about data and believe it or not, also about metadata, right? Because people are trying to analyze what's happening um, with the cloud, you know, among cloud providers, what are customers doing with the data, right? How are they using data? How often are they accessing data? Um, security, you know, from that perspective, looking at who's accessing, accessing what. So um, the data conversation and the metadata conversation are truly enabled by the cloud and they're, they're key. And they weren't that easy to do in a prior, you know, legacy sort of environment. This is a great point. I'm glad you brought that up because in the legacy environment, all, the, all that metadata, that data about the data is locked inside of these systems. And if you're going to go right. across clouds, and you're going to have it secure and governed, you've got to have that metadata visibility and, and a point of control that actually can see that and, and can manage it. So uh, thank you for that, for that point. And thank yeah, you, yeah. Anna, for coming on the, on the Cube and participating in the Cube on Cloud. It's been great having you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. All right, keep it right there, everybody. More from the Cube on Cloud right after this short break. <laughs>